He said, Jim, if you had enough reasons, you could do the most incredible things. I never forgot how he put that. If you have enough reasons. See, reasons will change your whole life. Mr. Shove said to me, he said, Mr. Rohn, I think you've got plenty of intelligence, you've got plenty of talent, you've got plenty of ability. Probably what you lack is plenty of reasons. He said, I don't think your current bank balance is a true indication of your level of intelligence. I was happy to hear that. He said, I think you're much smarter than your present bank balance indicates. And that turned out to be true. I was much smarter. But of course, my first question was, well, then why isn't it bigger? And he said, you don't have enough reasons. You've got enough intelligence, but not enough reasons. So see, reasons can change your life. Here's what else I found out. Reasons come first, answers come second. You don't get the answers to do well till you get the reasons. Life has a mysterious way of hanging on to all the answers and only gives them up to the people that are inspired by reasons. So reasons make the difference in how your life works out. Now, what are some of the reasons for doing well? Let's go through a quick list called reasons for doing well. First is personal reasons. Some people do well for recognition. Some people do well for respect. Some people do well for the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. Those are good reasons. I have some millionaire friends that keep working 10, 12 hours a day, making more millions. And it's not because they need the money. It's because they need the joy and the satisfaction and the pleasure that comes from being a constant winner. And see, it's not just the money anyway. It's the journey, not the money. Once in a while, somebody says to me, boy, if I had a million dollars, I'd never work another day in my life. That's probably why the good Lord sees to it they don't get their million, right? <laughs> They'd quit. They'd quit. Okay. Next is family reasons. Some people do extremely well for other people. And that's powerful. Human beings can greatly affect each other. Sometimes we will do things for somebody else we will not do for ourselves. We are made that way. I met a man one time who said, Mr. Owen, to do all the things I want to do with my family around the world, he said, I got to have at least a quarter of a million dollars a year. I thought, incredible. Could a guy's family affect him that much? And the answer is, of course. How fortunate are the people that find themselves greatly affected by somebody for personal achievement. And we are affected. The writer of a recent song said, if not for you, the winter would hold no spring, couldn't hear a robin sing. I just wouldn't have a clue if not for you. So we can be affected. That might be one of the most stimulating reasons to do well, finding somebody. When Andrew Carnegie died, the wee little Scotsman that built the big steel industry, when he died, they opened up his desk. And in one of the desk drawers, they found a slip of paper. On that piece of paper, Mr. Carnegie had written his goal for his life. And he wrote it when he was in his 20s. And on that piece of paper, it said, I'm going to spend the first half of my life accumulating money. I'm going to spend the last half of my life giving it all away. What a goal. He got so inspired by that goal that the first half of his life, he accumulated $450 million. And the last half of his life, he gave it 
all away. Good question tonight. What's got you turned on? What's got you bombed out of sight to get up early and stay up late and hit it all day? Next question. What's got you turned off? When I found the answers to those two questions, my life exploded into change. I finally found out what had me turned off, and I got that cured. And then I got me a long enough list of reasons to turn me on. And once the lights went on for me, age 25, they've never gone out. I've fallen out of the sky a few times, but I've never lost that drive to make something unique out of my life. See, reasons altered my whole life. Now, there's another list of reasons called nitty gritty. Hard little reasons. Sometimes those little reasons are the most powerful reasons that can change your life. Sometimes it doesn't take much. I now carry several hundred dollars in my money clip. It's only a few hundred dollars, but it was one of those reasons turned my life around. Just before I met Mr. Shove, I heard a knock at the door. I go to the door, and there's a little girl standing there about this tall selling Girl Scout cookies. And she gave me one of the finest sales presentations I've ever heard. Special deal, several flavors, this whole package of stuff, two dollars. And with a big smile, she very politely asked me to buy. And I wanted to. Big problem. I'm broke. I don't have two dollars. And to this day, I can remember the pain and the embarrassment. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I've been to college, I'm working, I'm 25, I don't have two dollars. And I didn't want to tell her that for some reason. <laughs> so I did what I thought was next best. I lied to her. <laughs> I said, hey, look, I've already bought lots of Girl Scout cookies. I've still got plenty stacked in the house, which was not true. But it seemed to get me off the hook for the moment. She said, well, gosh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. And she went away. When she left, I closed the door. And that was the day I said to myself, I don't want to live like this anymore. I've had it with lying and I've had it with being broke. I'm never going to let this happen to me ever again. I promised that day I would work as hard as possible and would always carry plenty. It took me a little while, but now I do. It was one of those reasons. And I guess I carry plenty for two reasons. One is the way it makes me feel, but also in case I bump into another Girl Scout selling cookies. <laughs> right? I'm ready. I walked out of the Bank of America one time up in Saratoga, California, where I used to live. Two little girls selling candy right outside the bank. Good place. <laughs> Some girls organization they're working for, right? I come walking out of the bank. This first little girl walks up to me. She said, Mister, would you like to buy some candy? I said, I probably would. What kind is it? She said, it's Almond Roca. I said, my gosh, that's my favorite. She said, wonderful. I said, how much is it? She said, it's just $2. I thought, incredible. I said, how many boxes of that candy have you got? She said, five. And her little friend was standing there. She was selling candy, too. I said, how many boxes have you got? She said, I've got four. I said, that's nine. I'll take them all. They said, really? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, it's my favorite. I've got some friends. I'll pass them around. They got so excited, put all this candy together. 
I reached in my pocket and gave them the $18. When I've got the candy and they've got the money, that first little girl looked up, looks up at me. She says, Mr., you are really something. How about that? Can you imagine only spending $18 and have somebody look at you in the face and say, you are really something. <laughs> now you know why I carry heavy, right? <laughs> I'm not going to miss any more. <laughs> it was just one of those reasons helped to change my life. One of my nitty gritty reasons was budget finance. Budget finance used to grind my soul. Way back in those early days, I had fallen for one of those consolidation loans where you take all your little hard-to-pay bills, put them into one big impossible-to-pay bill, right? <laughs> I would get four or five payments behind. This one guy used to call me day and night. I don't think they're allowed to do that anymore. Harassed me. Threatened to run me in front of the judge. Threatened to ruin my credit. Threatened to embarrass my family. One day he said, we're going to come get your car, drag it rear end up down the street in front of your neighbors. <laughs> the guy even called me a flake. <laughs> and back in those days, I'm broke, I'm pitiful, there's nothing I can do about it. But I never forgot how the guy treated me. And when I met Mr. Show and I got my life started, straightened out and the money started to flow, that was one of my first projects, budget finance. I poured it on day and night. I finally put all the money together I owed him, which was considerable. I picked a day for the payoff. And when the payoff day came, I put the money in small bills in a big briefcase. <laughs> and I walked into the budget finance office on Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles. The guy who harassed me so often, his desk was about three back. I walked right up to his desk, startled him. He wondered what I was doing there. It was the first time I'd been there since I'd borrowed the money, right? <laughs> Without saying a word, I opened up this briefcase, dumped this pile of money all over his desk. I said, count it. It's all there. I will never be back. And I turned around and stormed out. Now, that might not be noble, but if you haven't tried it, you've got to one time. <laughs> it can be the day that turns your life around. All you need is a reason that turns you on. One of my dear friends, Robert DePew, Bobby used to be a school teacher in Lindsay, olive capital of the world. Bobby taught school several years, got a little weary teaching school. One day, decided he wanted to get into sales. So without telling anybody, he just up and quit his job teaching school and jumped into sales. When he did, his brother made fun of him, laughed at him, put him down, said Roberts lost his mind, had a good job teaching school. Now he thinks he's a sales. He's going to go down the drain, lose everything. Just put him down something fierce. Bobby said... The way my brother acted when I got into sales, he said, that made me so mad, I decided to get rich. And my question for you tonight is, is it possible to get that mad? Of course. Wealth is not a matter of intelligence. It's a matter of inspiration. Today, Robert happens to be one of my millionaire friends. Bobby's rich. Frank Sinatra said one time, the best revenge is massive success. Hey, get you a long enough list of reasons so that after tonight you never lack for inspiration. You might not have all the answers right away, but you can get the answers if you can get the reasons.